Turkey is a NATO ally. It's a member of NATO. That means it's supposed to be not just a friend, but a true and faithful and trustworthy ally of the United States and the rest of the NATO alliance in Western and Eastern Europe. Yet, under Erdogan, Turkey keeps moving steadily and increasingly rapidly to the dark side. Erdogan is forging military and economic deals with Russia and Iran. Erdogan, a Sunni Muslim, is increasingly demonstrating that he is not just a regular run-of-the-mill Sunni Muslim, but a radical Sunni Islamist who wants to position himself not so much as a democratically elected leader, but as a demagogic dictator. Let's talk Turkey. Hi, I'm Joel Rosenberg, host of the Rosenberg Report here in Jerusalem. And Turkey is in the news this month, this week. In fact, it's in very serious trouble. Now, most people, including most Christians, are not paying much attention to Turkey. But we really need to talk about it. Turkey? Joel, you mean that big country straddling Europe and Asia, where the Apostle Paul used to preach the gospel and plant churches? Do you mean that enormous country just south of Russia and just north of Israel? Are you talking about that massive country with the biggest army in all of NATO? Yep, yeah, that's the one. That's the Turkey that I'm talking about. Look, Turkey is a gorgeous and historic and complicated and fascinating country. I've been there many times and I love the people, the land, the geography, and the biblical history and archaeology of Turkey. But, and this is important, modern Turkey is in very, very serious trouble, economically, politically, and prophetically. And that's why I say, give me a few minutes and let's talk Turkey. Let's start with Turkey's economy. And let's contrast what's happening in Turkey with what's happening in the United States. Now, ever since President Biden took office, Americans have become very worried about inflation, and rightly so. Food prices have soared. Gas prices have soared. All prices have soared. Inflation in the United States last year clocked in at a whopping 8.5%, the highest rate in 40 years. That's right. Americans haven't experienced inflation this high since 1982. But that is nothing compared to what's going on in Turkey. Last year in 2022, inflation in Turkey hit, wait for it, 85%. That's right, you heard me, 85% inflation in Turkey last year. That's 10 times worse than what's happening in the United States. Now, the current president of Turkey, a man named Recep Tayyip Erdogan, says, hey, don't worry, things are getting better. After all, in April, prices in Turkey only went up 50%, not 85%. In May, the Turkish inflation rate was even better, clocking in at around 45%, not 50%. Wow, such progress. But skyrocketing inflation is only part of the crisis that Turkey is facing economically. Over the past five years, the value of the Turkish currency, known as the lira, has plunged by, wait for it, 77%. That's right, 77%. And it just keeps falling. This week, the lira hit an all-time record low against the dollar. Why? Well, that brings us to this question, where is Turkey heading politically? Short version, it's not good. Turkey's current leader, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, as I've been talking about, he's been in power for 20 years. Erdogan was first elected prime minister in 2003. 11 years later, he was elected president. That was in 2014, and he took office on August 28th, 2014. And no matter how badly this guy does in office, no matter how much damage Erdogan causes to Turkey's economy, culture, history, and brand, he just keeps getting reelected. Now, personally, I don't think for one minute that the Turkish people really want Erdogan in power. I mean, would you reelect a guy presiding over an 85% inflation rate and causing the value of your currency to plunge by 77%? And when he gets reelected, it goes down even further? Of course not. That's why it seemed last month, for one fleeting moment, that the people of Turkey were finally going to rise up and drive Erdogan out of office. Even with all the corruption, even with all the vote rigging, 
Erdogan was not able to win 50% of the vote last month in the presidential elections, and that forced him into a runoff with the head of Turkey's opposition party. For the last few weeks, pro-democracy forces inside and outside of Turkey have been hoping, praying, working to drive Erdogan from office. But when the results of the runoff were announced on Sunday, guess who'd won another term? Now supposedly, allegedly, Erdogan won 52% of the vote, while the head of the opposition won only 48%. Sure, and if you believe that, well, never mind, of course you don't believe that, and neither do I. Look, in 2016, there was a coup in Turkey. People inside and outside of the government and in the military actually rose up and tried to overthrow Erdogan since they couldn't seem to oust him through democratic means. The coup failed. Erdogan crushed the coup and he arrested some 500,000 people and dismissed another 150,000 government employees from their jobs whom he accused of being disloyal and subversive. What's more, Erdogan has thrown scores of journalists into prison, making Turkey the second worst country for journalistic freedom in the entire world in 2021, just behind communist China, according to the Committee to Protect Journalists. What's really crazy about this is that Turkey is a NATO ally. It's a member of NATO. That means it's supposed to be not just a friend, but a true and faithful and trustworthy ally of the United States and the rest of the NATO alliance in Western and Eastern Europe. Yet, under Erdogan, Turkey keeps moving steadily and increasingly rapidly to the dark side. Erdogan is forging military and economic deals with Russia and Iran. Erdogan, a Sunni Muslim, is increasingly demonstrating that he is not just a regular run-of-the-mill Sunni Muslim, but a radical Sunni Islamist who wants to position himself not so much as a democratically elected leader, but as a demagogic dictator, as the sultan of Sunni Islamism a man I increasingly call the tyrant of Turkey. In my recent nonfiction book, Enemies and Allies, I spend several chapters documenting Erdogan's political career and his consistent moves to distance himself from the West and ally himself with Russia and Iran. This is a problem, a huge problem, and not just for the United States, NATO, and for the people of Turkey. It's also a huge problem for Israel. Which brings us to the third part of this equation. Where is Turkey going prophetically? And here I need to turn your attention to Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, what Bible scholars call the coming war of Gog and Magog. Now, in this prophecy, a dictator rises to power in Russia, uh, which is a country we, we know biblically as Magog, and he forms an alliance with multiple other countries, among them Persia, which we know today is Iran, and a country called Gomer. Now, that's not where Gomer Pyle is from. This is the country uh, historically, biblically uh, known as Gomer that we today call Turkey. And, it's got, and there are other countries in this alliance also. The, the point is that Turkey is a major ally of Russia and Iran in the last days of history, according to the prophet Ezekiel. And he's going to come be a part of this massive attack, this cataclysmic eschatological attack on Israel. This group of countries, Turkey included, is going to surround Israel, attack Israel, invade Israel, and try to conquer and devour the prophetically reborn nation-state of Israel. Now, according to the prophecies, Ezekiel 36 and 37, Israel has been reborn. The Jews are coming back to the land after centuries of exile. The deserts are blooming. The Jews are rebuilding the ancient ruins with God's help. All that is happening. And now we are actually seeing other chess pieces on the board seem to come into alignment. Russia, Iran, Turkey, and these other countries are seeming to form the very alliance that could suggest, could suggest that we're getting closer to the fulfillment, or at least the beginnings of the fulfillment, of Ezekiel 38 and 39. And that's why I worry about where Erdogan is taking Turkey. Look, I want to be clear, I can't tell you that Vladimir Putin is the Gog dictator that Ezekiel writes about. 
Uh, Putin is certainly Gog-esque. <laughs> he certainly looks like a Gog. He may be Gog, but we don't know that yet. So let's not jump to any rash conclusions. Let's just keep watching what's happening. Erdogan is taking Turkey away from the West, where it has been for almost 100 years now, uh, and, and part of the NATO alliance as well. He's, he's taking, he hasn't left NATO, but he is moving Turkey to the, in the wrong direction, moving them to the dark side, because he is fundamentally rejecting the rest, the West. He does not agree with being a close ally of the West. He wants the benefits of working closely to the United States and Western Europe, but he is moving closer and closer to Russia, Iran, and other uh, countries. And this is a problem. It's a huge problem because it suggests that Erdogan is going to be part of an end times alliance one day. Again, I want to be crystal clear. We can't say it for certain, but, let's, but what can we say for certain as we close out this let's talk Turkey talk? Erdogan for years has a, attacked Israel verbally, has withdrawn its ambassador, has uh, allowed Sunni radical Islamist terrorists to come from Turkish shores and, and create all kinds of problems here as they were coming to Gaza. And, uh, and, and he, is, he, is, he has used propaganda against Israel. He has claimed Jerusalem is his own. He has welcomed radical Islamists he is, uh, into the country. He has allowed ISIS uh, fighters to cross Turkey into Syria. Now his military is operating inside Syria with whom? With Russia and Iran, just north of Israel's northern border. We've never seen that in history before. So does that mean for sure that we're about to enter into the war of Gog and Magog? No, it, it doesn't mean that for sure. But are the trend lines continuing to seem like everything is being, like the stage is being set for that prophecy? Yes, I would say increasingly that's true. Now, just in the past year, Erdogan tried a rapprochement with Israel. Okay, said, oh, let's try to be friends again. Let's, let's, uh, well, I'll send an ambassador to you. You send an ambassador to me, Mr. Uh, people of Israel. Uh, let's have, let's make sure our flights from Turkey to Israel are going just fine. Let's have Israelis come back and, and tour in Turkey. And he really tried to seem like he was moderating his anti-Israel position. And that may have uh, helped him a little bit in the election, although I think the election was rigged. But the bottom line is this. I do not expect this rapprochement between Turkey and Israel to last. I think Erdogan is a dangerous figure. I think he's aligning himself with all the wrong people. Maybe for the short term, things will be okay and peaceful and calm between Israel and Turkey. But under Erdogan, especially now that he's stolen, in my view, another election or narrowly, you know, narrowly won a democratic election, although it's really hard to believe that uh, with this level of ferocity in the Turkish people, you know, 85% inflation, everything, that somehow Erdogan won a fair democratic election with all that. I don't buy it, but, the, but that's not really the point the, at this stage. The point is Erdogan is there. He believes he's there to stay. He's got a lot of power. He's got the strongest and biggest military in all of Europe. And he's dangerous. We've got to watch him closely, and we've got to pray um, that the Lord remove him or at least protects Israel from him. So that's why we're talking Turkey. It's been a bad week, and uh, I wasn't able to get into all of this on the Rosenberg Report, but I, that's why we have these YouTube exclusive reports, these videos, so I can go into more depth on some key issues that you need to know about. I'm Joel Rosenberg in Jerusalem for the Rosenberg Report. I hope that's helpful. Keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem.